Okay, today we're going to look at the iris data that's built into R. This is the data set with 150 rows and five variables that uh, characterizes 150 flowers, and they are divided into three species. And there are four variables that are measures. It's interesting how they're recorded uh, because there are two parts that they're measuring of each flower. One is the sepal and the other is the petal. And there are two attributes of each part they're measuring, length and width. Now one quick way to visualize this is to use what is known as a pairs plot where it plots each variable against each other variable, so uh, in an attempt to determine correlations. However, the data is not really in a format that allows for general plotting. So for example, if I wanted to plot something like this, where I'm looking at length versus width in general um, as faceted or as conditioned by the flower part, petal or sepal, I can't really do that if the data is organized like this. I have to do some transformations. And the same is true here. I'm using part, the part of the flower petal or sepal to color the, uh, the points. Okay, so we're going to use a couple of fat functions from tidyr to accomplish this. Now one of the first things that I would do is create a unique identifier for each row because when you shape or reshape data uh, to a significant degree, those functions assume that there is something that uniquely identifies each row. So all I'm doing is creating a label uh, from 1 to 150. All right, so the gather function will allow us to take, for example, all four of these numeric columns and stash them under uh, one column, or basically two columns, really. Um, one will describe the measured variable name in this part, uh, excuse me, in this case, part under bar ATTR, and the associated value will be in a column called measure. And in the call to the gather function, that's what I have here. I have the data frame, I have the key, which is going to be uh, the column describing sepal length, sepal width, etc. And the value will be the associated numeric. Now the minus species and minus ID simply says do nothing with the species and ID columns, leave them intact. And so this is what we wind up with. Um, we have species, ID, and we have the part, dot, and then the attribute, and then there's the measure. So I've run this command here to group by each of the species and sample about three rows from each so you can see how this looks. This doesn't really do what we want. Um, to get the plot would require us to have petal and sepal in its own column, at least for a start. So one thing that we could do is use the separate function to uh, split these up, right, to create another column that distinguishes the part from the measurement of that part. And so what I could do here is I will um, use the gathered iris data frame, pipe it to the separate function, I specify part under bar attribute, and then I create two new columns. So notice that we now have a part independently of what is being measured. So we have the measure here, we have the attribute, and there's the part. Now we still <laughs> don't yet have what we need um, because the attribute column uh, the width and length are not directly accessible. We could filter on attribute and say give us a width that exceeded a certain measure or something like that. The final solution here, or at least one of the final solution, is to spread the attribute column um, into two columns. The two columns will be the unique values of the attribute column, width and length. So this will turn into this. And it's a pretty elegant solution because we spread attribute. It creates two new columns using the measure column to fill this out. So we finally have the data in a format that will allow us to create this plot that you saw earlier.